Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, Out of the Dark Room. Tonight I'm going to demonstrate five ways to extract objects so you can use them on a new background. And some will be destructive, some will be non-destructive. I'll explain as I go, but PaintShop Pro has quite a few different ways to do that. And you can surely find one that you're comfortable with. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to open the Paint Shop Pro program. And like I've said before, I'm using um, 2022 edition, but I believe from 2020 on up, it will be similar. And you can get the uh, a demo from PaintShopPro.com and that will be 2023. You can get Ultimate or you can get their Standard Edition. And the difference will be the different workspaces. But check that out. And if you like the software or if you have any questions, let me know. I'm not affiliated with Corel or Paint Shop Pro in any way. So to start, we're going to go to the workspace. And I will be working in the complete workspace, which I already have selected here. So if I were to change it, I would hit apply. But that's what I'm on right now. So we'll go to edit. Now I'm going to get my photo that I want to extract from the background. So I can go to manage. And we'll pick this photo of one of my horses. Now I do do a lot of horse photography and sometime I'm going to take you along as I'm photographing the horses. And that will be something different rather than sitting at a computer and editing. Okay, now this will be working in layers. So make sure you have your layer palette open. I like to have the layers, the materials, and the history open. And how you would do that, if they're not already showing on your screen, is you go to palettes, and then here's some of the basic. And see, so you can have, we have history, layers, materials, and then of course you want your tool options. Otherwise you won't be able to see how you're making changes. And if you used all the keyboard shortcuts, I guess you really wouldn't have to have it open. But those are kind of hard to memorize, so I prefer not to use them. But anyway, let's get started. So here we have a background layer. And since it's named background, I won't be able to really do much with it. I won't be able to move it around in the order of the layers. So just in case I want to, I'm going to rename it. And I'm just going to change it to background one. All right, now I'm going to um, do the first way, uh, the most basic way that Corel or Paint Shop Pro gives you to extract an object. But first of all, I'm going to duplicate this layer. So that way I will have my original on the bottom because this is really a destructive way. If you would make the changes to this layer, you would only be able to go back and do undo so many times in order to correct your mistake. So let's go to layers and then I'm going to duplicate. And now since I'm going to want to put it on a new background, I'm going to make a background right now and it might not be the one that I want to use, but it will definitely help me see more of what my subject is going to look like against a different background. So here I'm going to go back to my layers menu, new raster layer, and click OK. Now I'm going to flood fill this layer with a different color. And you can do any color you want, but make sure you do one that will have enough contrast between your subject and the background. That will help you make more accurate selections and correct them better as we go along. So now I'll choose my paint bucket, flood fill. 
and make sure your tolerance is way up if you're going to fill the whole layer. If you want to only fill a certain color, then you want your tolerance to be lower. Let's go to the materials palette. And now let me select a color that I might want for my background and I'm going to choose, let's see, kind of a medium gray. And then also make sure that you're that this layer is highlighted, that you're clicked on that layer. And just click the paint bucket. And now don't worry, that didn't cover up our image. And I'll show you why. Go ahead and bring your copy of your background to the top. And now you have the copy, the raster solid color layer, and then your original background. Okay, now here is an option that I hardly ever use anymore. I think in the beginning when it was new with one of the older Paint Shop Pro editions, I used it more often. But it may be simpler for some people, so that's why I'm going to show it. So here's option number one. We're going to go to Image, Object Extractor, and then it's going to bring up a new screen. Now here you will have some adjustments like your brush size and you can use your mouse or I use um, like a Wacom tablet so I have a pen and a tablet. Anyway, you don't want your brush size too large or too small so you may have to try it out. And don't worry, you can reset it down here. Okay, so now as you can see, it's drawing the green line. I am going to make it just a little bit bigger. And now I'm just going to draw around my object or my subject. And you don't have to be real accurate because I'm going to show you how to fix that. Of course, if you go too far inside, you won't be able to fix that as easily. Now it's really hard to get a straight line with your mouse, but it can be done. And make sure your lines connect. Otherwise, when it makes the selection, it'll be outside the area that you want to select. And now for the hair, I might kind of go around it. You want it to look as natural as possible. And now for the ears, I prefer to get white around it because you certainly don't want to cut off part of the ear. Okay, now as you can see, my green line connects and you can zoom in on this. So there's no gaps in the line. Now you're going to want to flood fill it with this paint bucket and this will help extract that area only. So just click on the paint bucket and then click your subject and see how it turned red. That's going to save your selection. So now hit process. And as you can see, it deleted the background and this is now transparent. And you'll know because you can see the checkerboard. And then you can also edit the mask or there's another way to do it. So click OK. And there we go. So we have the object extracted. It's kind of a rough draft. But on top here we have the copy of the background. And we have the gray background that I made. And then we have the original background. So now what I'm going to do is use my eraser tool and I'm not going to use the background eraser because it would be a little difficult, you know, maybe for the areas where there's hair, you might want to use it, but it would be just a little bit difficult because the colors are so similar. So just use the regular eraser. Now on your tool options, you can adjust the size, the hardness which is how crisp the line is. 
the step, which is like the dithering between your strokes and the density, the thickness and rotation and the opacity. I like to work with as big of a eraser brush as I can. And of course, as you zoom in here, it's gonna look a little bit bigger and just pan to the area that you wanna work on. Now, this is definitely something you're gonna to wanna to take your time. And now if you're using your mouse, you would click with the left mouse button to erase, and you would click with the right mouse button to put it back. But again, I call this a destructive method because you can only undo so many times, and I think it might be up to 30 or something like that. Okay, so I'll show you an example of this. So right now, this is my left mouse button and see how I'm erasing the rest of the background. But let's say I made a mistake and I want to put it back. Click with the right mouse button and it will put it back. And I'm going to go to my pen here. And depending on the tip of the pen, how accurate I can get here. And obviously I wanna to try to leave as much of the little hairs as possible because otherwise it just doesn't look natural. I don't know any horse that's gonna have perfectly slicked down hair or no hair unless their mane's roached. And even then I would hope that the forelock wouldn't be roached, but I suppose that's possible. So now, as you can see, there's one little hair right there. I didn't get real close. And then especially on the ears right here, you may want to increase the softness. Because as you can see, they're a little fuzzy it's not a sharp crisp line and there's a situation where i got too much so i can go back to my mouse and put that back now you can't put anything back that you already ex extracted let's make that just a little bit smaller That way I can get closer. Okay, now for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm not going to bore you to death and do every fine little detail. Let's go to the background eraser and see what it can do for the areas in the hair here. Now I want to turn down the size. And I'm going to have it on contiguous and sampling once and then turn my tolerance down. So let's uncheck auto tolerance. I'm going to put the tolerance at about seven. Now, all I want to take out are these little white areas here. And now I'm going to click on that color. Maybe turn my tolerance up a little bit more. And it is removing them some. The background eraser doesn't always do that great of a job. But the higher the tolerance, the better it's doing here. And some of this may actually be the sunlight or the way the light is hitting the hair. Okay, now to zoom in and out, I use my scroll button on my mouse. Okay, 
I'm going to go back to my regular eraser tool. And then just go around the photo and make sure you get all the little leftover artifacts. And take your time and do your edges really close. So let's go back to the background eraser. I'm going to click on this. And as you can see, it's only erasing certain shades of the gray. So I can increase my tolerance. And then it will get more. Now, if I would lift this up, it would select a new color to erase. Because I have sampling on once. Okay, let's go back to the regular eraser. And now just like if you're drawing, you know, you don't have a real slick edge there. Let's move over here a little bit. And scroll out and you can pan by using the hand tool here. Okay, now I would want to go all the way around my picture and fine tune it. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm not going to do that. And now to merge it to my background, I would go to my layers and merge down. And then when I'm done with the image, I would want to flatten it all and then save it. So let's undo all this and I'm going to show you another way. So here's my history. Let's go back to the selection update. And I undid everything. So it brings us back to where we started. So I got my background, copy of background and the fill, fill layer. Okay, so that's one way to extract, extract and select an object. Let me show you the second way. Okay, now you're going to have a variety of selection tools here. You have the um, shape selection, freehand selection, magic wand, smart selection brush, and auto selection. So let's see what the auto selection does. So here's your second way to extract an object. And as you can see, it didn't really understand the difference between the contrast here and it selected part of the fence. But you can fix all this and then you're going to want to Make sure it's on the outside. So you would go to your freehand selection and make sure the mode is on remove or let's do add first because we want to add this. And we're going to add this area that it missed. Just make a circle around it and see now it, it included that. And we don't necessarily want the fence in there or even part of that fence post. So go to remove and just draw a circle around it. 
we're going to get, oops, that might have went too far, but nope, it kind of brought that in a little bit. Okay, now all you have to do is go to your selection menu, click invert. Now what that did was select all this instead of this and hit clear and let's see how that looks with our feathering and not too bad. So now you can go to select none and go back to your eraser tool to fine tune it. And this will be just like we did in the beginning, but it is a destructive way so in order to undo it, there are several ways to do that. You could um, actually move your background layer up here. So see, it didn't uh, keep some of the eyelashes here. You could always go back and add those in later if you prefer. It did a pretty good job on the ears. And then here's part of the fence you're going to want to get rid of. And now I like the edges to be a little more blurry and when you make your selections you'll notice there's an option to feather. So now if I were to finish this I would go back and put in some of the hairs here and the eyelashes. But for the purpose of this demo, I'm not going to show you that because that will take a lot of time. And now the same thing is if you want to save this, click layer and merge down and then flatten all. So once again, let's undo this. I'm going to show you the third way. Let's go back to where I made my fill layer here. I guess I undid all those so I only have to go here. Check my layer menu. Move the copy up there. Now we'll do a freehand selection. Now under freehand once again, we want to make sure we have add. You don't want to remove the selection. And then you can do edge seeker, freehand point to point, or smart edge. I'm going to show you the smart edge. And what it's going to do is try to snap to the areas where there's a good contrast between the foreground and the background. So see, you just go along it and it's going to try to follow the line. Now it may not do very well on these lighter areas. But if you feel like you don't have a real steady hand or you're using your mouse, this certainly might be the way to go. Okay, now you can see what I'm doing. You'll go around the entire image. And then once again, you'll hit invert and clear your background. Okay, now let's get rid of that. Move my layer to the top. Now I'm going to use um, a freehand selection and then the refine brush and I'll show you that. It's like masking but it's a quick way to do it. So the selection tool is just going to be completely freehand. And again, center and get your image to a workable size. When you're using the freehand selection, it's really hard to pan your image because it's going to make a selection where you stop. 
So I try to fit it all into the screen view. Okay, now you don't have to be real accurate, but as close as you can, go around the outside edges of the subject that you want to extract. I'm going to get to the bottom here and just draw a straight line over. And I suppose you could select a bigger area, but then you have, it takes a lot more time to work with removing all that you didn't get this time around. Okay. So now it made a kind of a wide selection, but you can go to your refine brush. Now the areas that you don't want in your photo, because I have it on overlay, are red and the areas you want to keep are the original image. Now I'm going to go fix those lines. So up here you have your brush mode and this is refined like you would want to use for hair. And then you can feather the edges so they're not a real crisp edge. And here you can add and remove from the selection. So we're going to want to start with remove and try to get a little closer. And as you can see, that's kind of hard. Let's, let's smooth this a little bit. You can also change the border width. So now I'm going to use the refine, refine brush right here. So it selected that hair. And then get as close as you can. And I'm just going to keep doing this and I will speed it up. I will speed the video up. So you don't have to get so terribly bored watching me do these tedious details here. Now we can slow back down. And I like my output to be to a new layer. You can do it to a selection or a mask in case you want to edit later. But I'm also going to show you how to do masks. So we're going to apply it to a new layer. And as you can see, it removed the old background, even what was inside these little lines because I used the refine brush. Okay, so now we have our layer that is our extracted subject. And so we can do a couple of things with this. We can save it as a ping file so we can use it over and over again. You can save it as a PSP image if you want to pick up editing where you left off. Or you can just merge it down to the layer you created, or you can import a new photo to add a new layer. But we're going to get into masking. So when we do the masking, I'll show you how to put it on a, a new photo. 
change it to a more realistic background, I should say. Okay, so now as you see, we want to select none. Okay, so now we're going to arrange our layers. We have our background, our raster, and the copy of the background, which it's not visible right now, but if I would make it visible, you can see it's right here. So I'm going to take this raster layer that I made with the gray color and move it up. And now I might refine this a little bit before I merge it down. So make sure you're checked on the correct layer. And there's just one little edge here that I might fix. Maybe it's a little jagged right there. But that's pretty good. And of course, like I said, definitely take your time and work hard at getting it right. So now I'm going to take this top layer here that's um, just the subject alone and merge it down. And now it combined with the, the gray background layer. Now I can merge all layers. So I'm going to flatten it. And there's our new image and make sure to name it and name it in a file that you'll remember. Okay, now the fourth way or the fifth way of extracting an object is by masking. Now masking is a non-destructive way and I'm going to show you why. So let's go back to the um, select none here. I'm going to undo all this. And I'm actually going to work with the copy of the background again. So let's get rid of this. Now see we have our background and our raster and our copy and I don't want any selection on there. Okay. So let's make this layer visible and if you check mark this little square right here it'll make it visible again. <clears throat> okay now there's a couple of ways to do this. So you can go to layer, new mask layer, hide all, show all, and you probably want to show all. Or you can, can go here, new layer, new mask layer, and that's hide all. But we're going to do show all. New mask layer, show all. Okay, now the layer that you're going to be working on is going to look white. That's your mask layer. But trust me, this is going to work. So now we want to go to the materials palette and make sure we have black and white selected because black and white is what's going to create the mask. We're going to work with the paintbrush. Now black conceals and white reveals. So it's similar to the eraser, eraser tool, but it's better than the eraser tool because it's much easier to correct things. Okay, now we got a lot to mask here. Um, I might make the selection first like we did, but for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to show you um, the from the beginning. Okay, so to mask, we're going to paint with our paintbrush. And we want the standard default brush selected. And now your hardness, you want to be maybe somewhere in the middle. So 50. And density 100%. Thickness 100%, which we might change that as we get into some of the smaller areas. Blend mode normal. 
and you can do continuous. You can also adjust your brush size here. Okay, so now remember white reveals, black conceals. So I'm going to start with black and just paint out my background. Now if you look, what's showing through is this gray raster layer here. So now I would paint this whole thing. And of course, this is another long, boring part. So I will speed through the video, so I'm not going to talk now. But just watch my mouse and you can see what I'm doing. So let's slow this back down now. All right, so we painted with black, and as you can see in the materials palette, the black is at the top, so that's the one we were using. But now let's say I would make a mistake and I want to fix it. Let's say I want to reveal a little more of the neck here. Just going to paint over it with white. All right, now that's pretty good. And as you can see, here's the mask, and you can see there's some areas that I missed here. So we're going to fix that. Oh no. Got to be on the mask to do this. All right, now that's a pretty good extraction. So now let's say that I don't want this gray raster air um background and I want to put another photo in the background. I'm going to open up my photo. So we'll go to manage. Let's say we want to just put this sky in there. I don't know that I would normally use this, but for the purposes of the demonstration, I'm going to. So now I'm going to bring it into my image, into my workspace. And there are a couple ways to do this. You can drag it into your layers. Or you can copy and paste it. So let's select all, edit, copy. Now go back to our layer. And we're going to hit paste. So edit, paste as new layer. And as you can see, it pasted it as a new layer. So now you bring your mask above that. And bring your image above that. And it's a little bit easier to see now that there's areas that we missed because of the contrast in color. So let's go fix those. Go back to the mask and the paintbrush. And we're still on the black and white. 
Now we're going to fine tune this. Just kind of lightly go around the edges here. I'm going to decrease my brush size. I think the previous image might have had a lot of that gray color in it. This is just detail work. Which does seem very tedious, I know, but it gets better the more you do this, the quicker it is. Okay, there's a little part of the ear I want to fix there. Can go back and fix it. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, as you can see, I worked on this layer, the mask layer. And now this is brighter here because the sun's in the clouds. And we can move this. Or now we can move this layer. So let's pick this. We're moving the background layer. Can make it bigger and smaller. And you want the light coming in the right direction. And that's something I'm going to show you later in another session, how to edit the foreground and the background so the light matches. And this really doesn't do too bad. We can also adjust the white balance later, and that'll help. Okay, now if I want to save this, I'm going to merge my layers all down. Let's go to the top one. We're going to go to Layers, Merge All, Flatten. Now it saved it into one image, but of course we have to save it. So we'll do Save As. And I'm going to save this as a JPEG. and save. Okay, now, if you notice that there's any mistakes, you can go ahead and use your history to go back to where the mistake was made so you can correct it. You can undo these um, actions, and I will definitely show you that at another time. But for now, there's five ways to extract a subject from your photo and add a new background. Thank you for watching and like, share, comment below, and let me know if there's something specific you would like to see. Thank you. Bye.